right, welcome to the Palm Beach North Podcast. My name is Noel Martinez. I am your host, and today I am so excited to have my new boss, the new chairman of the board for the Palm Beach North Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Tim Burke, here with us today. Let me tell you a little bit about Tim. Tim has spent many, many years in the media business. Um, you probably know him as, as the publisher of the Palm Beach Post. He also spent some time at LRP Media Group. He brings a ton, a wealth of experience, tons of law, knowledge when it comes to media and communications, and brings this fresh look to our region and our chamber. I'm so excited to have him here today. Tim, welcome to the show. Noel, it is great to be here. Uh, we know each other quite well, so I'm confident that we will have a great conversation. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun, Tim. So everybody knows you from Palm Beach County. You, you've been here for a really, really long time. So tell us about where you grew up. Tell us about Timmy, Timmy Burke, right? Tell yes, us about that. Yes. Well, those who know me as Timmy uh, probably are from California because that's uh, those are my roots. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. Spent my formative years uh, in L.A. Uh, when I was teenager, middle of high school age, moved up to the San Francisco Bay Area, where uh, one brother, one of my brothers, still is, as is my uh, mom. And so, yeah, my roots are are all in California. I was uh, I moved to Florida before uh, any other Californian uh, did, I believe. Uh, today, as as we know, a lot of people are moving. To Florida, but uh, I was one of the first from from the from the West Coast. So uh, here I am, uh, thirty plus years later. So tell me about your family. Uh, t tell us about your family. Sure. Uh, well, uh, my wife Karen, we met uh, in uh, in Missouri. I went to the School of Journalism at the University of Missouri, and my first newspaper job was in Springfield, Missouri, and that's where I met Karen. She was uh, an intern at the newspaper where I was working. Uh, that's how we met. And uh, she, um, uh, we have gone on and had two beautiful daughters who are grown up and uh, on their own and uh, couldn't be more proud of them. What are they doing? Tell me about your daughters. Well, my uh, oldest daughter is a teacher by trade in, in Palm Beach County. She has taken a break to be a mom and she's uh, an, an unbelievable mom. No surprise there. I'm biased, but uh, so she lives here locally uh, with her husband and her two children, uh, and, a te and a teacher, like I said, by trade. And my youngest daughter is a singer-songwriter uh, up in uh, New York City. So she is uh, in, the, in that space and uh, just, uh, just launched her first uh, new uh, solo album. Yeah, so what's it like being a grandpa? We don't really talk a lot about that. Tell me about that. Grandpa can do no wrong. <laughs> Grandpa, what do they call you? Just a the, grandpa, grandpa just, Tim, or what do they call you, Pappy? No, no, or? no, no, no. We don't. We don't get really creative with the names. We were very, very consistent and traditional with our our, our names for the grandparents. It's Grandma and Grandpa, uh, and uh, yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, they're 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 just they're better than uh, they're better than advertised. And uh, you know, being a grandparent is 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 just uh, uh, like nothing else in the world. So uh, we spend a lot of time with our our two grandkids here. Awesome. 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 All right. So you have a very successful career in media. Um, tell me a little bit about that journey. I mean, leading up to being publisher of the Palm Beach Post. Sure. Well, the journey really, um, it's, uh, it started when I was probably eight years old is, is as, uh, odd as that might sound today where people change jobs and they don't know exactly what they want to do, which is perfectly normal. Uh, I was a little abnormal in that sense where I knew from eight years old on that I wanted to work for a newspaper. I knew that. Um, I grew up in LA. I was reading the LA Times every day as a, as a, as a youngster. I loved English. Uh, those who know me well know I, how much I love English, how much I love words, how much I love grammar, how much I love sentence structure. That sounds so, um, yeah, like so much fun. Exactly, yeah, it's so much fun to some people, not a lot, but to me, I, I absolutely loved it. And and I grew up reading the newspaper, and like a lot of kids growing up in LA and elsewhere, I I, I love sports, so uh, that's how I, I wanted to to work for a newspaper. I wanted to be a sports writer or sports editor uh, because I just figured, well, what what a better way to make a living than do uh, both, right? Uh, the love of sports and the love of words. So that's, that's what I did. And I, I went, 
I went to the University of Missouri exactly for that. That uh, Mizzou is the world's first school of journalism, so very very proud of my alma mater, um, and that's the sole reason I went there, and that's kind of how the the journey started, and and from there, and we can talk about uh, the rest of the the rest of the journey, but from there it 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 went from you know several newspaper stops, um, sports to digital to the business side and and publishing so uh, a lot of a lot of starts and stops in between but that 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 in a in a in a nutshell is is how i you know i knew from the eight years old this is what i wanted to do now today when i get up and stand in front of uh young people and give them advice i always tell them don't settle on anything don't settle too young keep your options open you know and of course I have very little credibility at that point because <laughs> I, I knew what I wanted to do at eight and I, and I, and I never wavered, but, but I, uh, like I said, that's, that's not the normal, uh, route to success in, in, in your career. So I always encourage people to explore all of your, all of your options. I was very fortunate that it worked out for me. I didn't explore a lot of options, but, uh, uh, absolutely no regrets. So you, you talked about the transition into the business side of things, right? So what was that like? So you went from a reporter, right? And, and, and then all now all of a sudden you're running the business side of things. So tell me about that. Yeah, it, it, that doesn't happen overnight. I, I, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a really a great example of, uh, learning on the job, right? I'm a, a lifelong learner. So I didn't go to business school. I went to J school. Uh, and so I didn't learn to run a business in college. I learned to run the business while I was working. Um, and and uh, like I said, I started out in sports. Uh, and and when you're when you're uh, a sports editor, um, especially back back then, you know, I'm going back a ways. You you really have to understand, uh, and you do get a, a glimpse of all parts of the business. So even though I was in the newsroom. I was dealing with everybody in all departments uh, in, in the building. So, so that was kind of the, those were the baby steps. Um, and then I was asked to uh, re really literally start, I'm dating myself, but start the digital operation in the newsroom at the Palm Beach Post. It didn't exist at the time, right? Because the internet had just come. And, and so I got a taste, uh, another taste of that. I had to put together a business plan for my bosses who said, hey, we have this internet and we, we need a website and we need like, what's the internet and resources <laughs> and laptops. So I, 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 that probably was my first business plan that, that I had ever put together. So I put a business plan for the internet operation in the newsroom of the Palm beach post and, and, and then the Palm beach daily news. Uh, and then, and then fast forward. So then I ended up running, uh, our, our digital operations for, 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 uh, for both newspapers um, but the real learning of business, the most intense learning of business was when I actually became publisher and they asked me to, to run the entire business. And, uh, uh, like I said, I had enough, I had enough knowledge to be dangerous, but there was, uh, a lot of learning on the job. But I also learned, Noel, that to be a strong leader, to be a great leader, you don't have to know everything. In fact, you don't really want to know everything That's Correct, yeah. because that's why you hire really good people. Yeah, get you, the heck out of the way. And you let them do their <laughs> job. And we'll talk about that. That's one of my learnings uh, uh, as, as a leader is it took me a while to learn that lesson, to get the heck out of the way. Yeah. So t tell me a little bit about, you know, what the day-to-day -day looks like for the publisher of the Palm Beach Post. Like, what was your day-to-day -day like? Well, the beauty of the day-to-day -day was it was never the same. And, and my personality, my nature is I, I can't do the same thing every day. It's not others, but that's how they're wired. They, they can do the same thing every day and they can do it really well. I need variety. I need variety uh, in, in, in my work life. So it was never the same. So one day it might be negotiating a, a contract with uh, our printing uh, vendor, um, you know, and then the next day I might be on the on the phone with our attorney because 
it, it, it's common where people don't necessarily like what you're reporting and they threaten to, you know, litigation. And so I talked to our attorney quite a bit, uh, I always enjoyed, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the conversations with our attorneys. Uh, uh, and, you know, and the next day or the next hour, I'm, I'm our editor uh, in the newsroom is calling me and say, hey, I, I need you to look at this story because we're, we're going to run it, we're going to print it tomorrow. And it's pretty sensitive. And our attorney looked at it ahead of publication, but this is the one where you, I need to make sure that you see this, um, you know, the next day, right. We have hundreds of people in the building and it, it, it might be a, an issue with an employee who, who is, who is, uh, uh, has, has, uh, an issue with us, or we have an issue with him or, I mean, so it, Runs the gamut. It runs. I mean, off the top of my head, there's five or six examples. But every day was like that. Um, and, and I haven't even mentioned. And I'm 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 at the Palm Beach North Chamber uh, breakfast. You better mention that early exactly. in the morning. Exactly. Well, I'm, let's talk about that. So, hours. Wh wh what are the hours like for the publisher of the Palm Beach Post? Um, like, are you? Is it a nine to five job? It's a, it's a six six a.m. Uh, to 6 a.m. So <laughs> 24 hours a day. You're on, you're on. I always said it's like being a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not, it's, and it's not just the publisher in, 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 in the media space, in the media world. I mean, I, I work with some incredibly just, uh, I mean, amazingly talented people. And they worked really, really hard. And we are all sort of on call. Uh, yeah. So, so the office hours, the uh, quote unquote office hours were, were, you know, semi, semi normal, you know, you, you know, I, I was typically actually in the office, typically, you know, seven or eight every day, but, but, you know, you go home and, and if something happens, especially if you're, you know, at, at that point, if you're running the operation, if you're the publisher, if something happens there, you know, a truck breaks down delivering the papers at 1, 1 a.m., you, you get the call. If the papers are going to be late uh, and there's a major issue, you, you, You're getting the you call. get the call. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the major, uh, if, if the press breaks down, back when we, were, we had our own presses, I mean, uh, or, or frankly, it didn't matter who was printing your newspaper, if the press breaks down, uh, that's, the publisher is going to get that call. And, the, and when presses break down, it's, you know, it's 2 in the morning. It's not 2 in the afternoon. So... Uh, so, uh, but, but it was just all over the board, all over the board, exhilarating, fun, uh, stressful in a good way, obviously deadline oriented, mm -hmm. uh, a, adrenaline rush, like you could never imagine. And the work was so important. Yeah. The work was so important. Mm -hmm. It's so important today. Uh, and yesterday it's so important. So you, you always went to bed. I think I speak for probably most everybody who's, who, who has done this for a living, you always went to bed like feeling, wow, I made a difference today. Uh, we made a difference today. And that was, that was an incredible feeling. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that is pretty awesome feeling. So you talked about the stresses. It was a stressful job. So tell me about some of the key challenges that you faced as publisher of the Palm Beach Post. Well, I think first and foremost, when I when I took that job uh, uh, with the Post, and also uh, a shout out to to the Daily News, uh, the shiny sheet on the island, uh, they were also our paper. Yeah, um, sorry to mention no, that. No, but yeah. no, no. Uh, uh, you know, when I became publisher, uh, we were in the throes of the major digital transformation with with media, and especially with print media. Uh, Radio and TV were a little, little uh, behind uh, in terms of the disruption, but the digital disrupt disruption was in full force. So that far and away was the uh, was the biggest was the biggest challenge, biggest opportunity, biggest headache. I mean, all in one. Yeah. Uh, uh, our business model was being turned upside down. Not overnight. But depending on how, you know, forward looking you were or a particular business was or a particular media outlet was, you know, it felt like some days it was overnight because the disruption was so significant and so massive that you, you couldn't move fast enough. You couldn't move fast enough. 
I always thought to myself and would say to others that if we think we're moving fast, then we're not moving fast enough. It, it, we, you, it was the, the, it was, it was completely like nobody had seen before. So uh, that was by far the biggest challenge when I became publisher. What about the future? Like, what does the future hold for, for newspapers, for the newspaper industry? They, I mean, I can't tell you when was the last time I picked up a paper. Right. Newspaper. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm getting that information digitally. Yeah. But like this, yeah. I can't even tell you when was the last time I picked one up. No, right. Right. Um, well, the future, um, you're, you're, you're already, I mean, you're already um, uh, in the future. So you just, you just answered, you answered part of your question. I don't, I don't look at a print. Uh, you know, product anymore. Uh, amazingly, some still do. Um, but uh, so, yeah, it's it's um, it's completely different than it it was. And here's the other thing about d digital. So, um, and this is what it, this is how I advise as well. Um, if if I'm asked about what's next, is digital when it first came a you know, what was, was upon us. It was, it really was, it was, if you remember, it was, all right, we have this internet thing and then we're all just creating websites. Right. And then everybody back then kind of collectively said, Hey, we did it. We did it. We transitioned to digital. That, that, of course, looking back, that was, that was completely uh, uh, short sighted because digital today and when you ask me what the future looks like, well, it's con constantly evolving and changing. So digital today looks different than digital yesterday, looks different from digital the day before. And what I mean by that is, think about it. Look at all the ways that you consume information now. Look at all the platforms. That's where I'm going. So digital used to mean website, then digital meant, oh yeah, newsletters, then digital meant, um, oh, podcasts. Yeah. Right. Uh, digital meant Snapchat. Digital meant Facebook. Digital meant Twitter. Digital means meant, uh, TikTok. Yeah. So you really need to look at, if you're running a business, you really need to be mindful of that, that digital, the transformation of digital is, is, nonstop and it's ever evolving. So there, there is no, there is no, we did it. There is no, we did it. It's, it's what's next. It's what's next. Yeah. And, and what kind of product are you uh, sending to your audience and, and to which platform? So you got to have the right, you got to have the right, you got to know your audience, you got to have the right audience and you got to put it, you put your content, if you're speaking from a media's perspective, you yeah. got to put your content into the platform where your audience is. You may not care about something. Well, somebody else is going to deliver to that audience, but where you consume what, what, whatever it is, your, your news and information or, you know, your, your hobbies uh, of interest, that content producer needs to find you where you are. What about local newspapers, right? How do they remain relevant? And, and then, why is it vital to community, to local communities, that their local paper is still relevant? Are you ready to bring your ribbon cutting to the next level? Introducing the Ribbon Cutting Ceremony Recap Video, your key to unforgettable event marketing. We know that each business is unique, and that's why we offer tailored solutions. Starting with our basic package, where you can commemorate your event with elegance, even without the video. But why stop there? Our comprehensive event coverage and premier business launch packages include the game-changing recap video, capturing every vibrant moment of your grand opening, from the ribbon cutting to impactful speeches, all in a stunning one-minute video. Best of all, your event's highlights won't just linger in the memories of those who attended. Through our partnership with the Palm Beach North Chamber of Commerce, your video will be featured across multiple platforms. Expect to see your business shine on social media, in newsletters, and our website, and even the acclaimed Palm Beach North podcast. Don't let your special day fade away. Make it a monumental one with the Ribbon Cutting Ceremony Recap video and reach audiences beyond your wildest dreams. Ready to elevate your grand opening? 
For pricing and more details, email katie at pbnchamber.com or visit our website for more information. Make your event unforgettable. Well, it's it's uh, it's, it's extremely vital. There's there are there are uh, studies uh, past and present that that uniformly say that uh, a local community that is civically engaged, that is informed, uh, that is participating, is more likely to vote for example, right, uh, and is more likely to, to be part of the process. Um, so an, inf an informed electorate is, is partly the result of a local media, independent local media, that is going to provide that news and information that, that will, will give the, the community the, uh, the means to understand what the local issues are, to know when their uh, their tax dollars are being spent wisely or unwisely. Uh, well, know when uh, a, a you know it happens. It, you know it does happen. There's bad guys out there. So yeah. uh, there's there's uh, you know you need to have an independent, credible media source holding holding uh, the power to account, holding government officials accountable. So if somebody is not doing what they should be doing on behalf of the electorate, the local community, uh, you need, you need a credible local independent source, uh, a news, news gathering source that is going to find this out is going to uncover these, uh, bad players so that the the local community is 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 obviously better informed. So civic engagement, I mean, again, civic engagement is in, increases. It, it's 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 been shown across the board. Civic engagement always increases when you have uh, a a viable local news um, uh, news sources in the, in that community. So, so how does a local newspaper stay relevant and, and, and how do, how are they credible? How do they become a credible source? And how do you know you're getting your information from a credible source? That's the better question. Yeah, it's, and that, and that is, that is part of the, uh, conundrum it is, is with the advent of digital and social media, anybody, yourself included yeah. can sit at home mm -hmm. Uh, and you now have the the technical and digital skills uh, or 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 products available to you. You can you, you tomorrow you you can uh, create a noelmartinez.com, uh, your own, your best source for local news. Now you may have no qualifications to. <laughs> I don't. And you don't. <laughs> no, with all due respect, uh, you're a great chamber CEO, but you're yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm going to trust you uh, <laughs> to run a news operation. Uh, but but you can, because of the the advent of social media, you know, it's that's the slippery slope because you can create something, anybody, uh, we kid around, you can do it. Anybody can create something that looks credible, that looks credible. And that's part of the challenge that local media is having now is anybody can can look like a reputable digital publisher and you know unfortunately a good part of the uh, electorate doesn't necessarily know yeah. they don't they don't, they don't know the difference they don't know the difference mm -hmm. uh so so there's a there's a um you know there's a big uh uh marketing uh you know effort that uh is is starting to take hold uh, in the industry, in the media industry, there are a lot of organizations and, and foundations that are getting involved in, in, into this, um, not only uh, funding um, local news operations and startups, but also around the messaging, because the messaging really matters, especially today in, 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 the, in the age of social media. The messaging is, is, is super important. Um, let me add this. Is... The traditional way to look at how does a quote unquote newspaper stay credible, you know, that the 
that that the way of looking at the the media landscape is is completely different now. So you don't even really look at it. I don't even look at it as well. How's the newspaper going to do this? I look at the newspaper as being the you know one of uh, a mul- multiple sources of local news and information, and that's part of the kind of the 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 opportunity and, and the excitement where we can start filling these. They call it local news deserts. We can start filling these deserts yeah. where mm-hmm. a lot of these uh, uh, journalists have 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 gone. I mean, uh, you know, the they've, they they've uh, these operations have had to reduce staff so much. So, but there's there's the model of the future, which is underway. Is it's a combination of pro- for profit. So think think more traditional news operations in terms of for profit, but there's also nonprofit. And so there is a lot of money now and more to come being invested uh, into local communities, into the nonprofit space. So philanthropy is going to play a very significant role in answering the ultimate question is how do local news, uh, how does local news uh, survive? How does, how do local news startups uh, come about? Uh, and, 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 and in the end, how do, how do we sustain these, these uh, local news operations? And it's going to be a combination of pro- for-profit and non-profit. That's interesting. I didn't know that. So let's switch it up a little bit. All right. So you spent many, many, many years in that industry, in the media industry. Now, all of a sudden, you make a move, right? You're at LRP Media Group. I did. So all of a sudden. Tell me a little bit about what attracted you to that role and what were your responsibilities there? Yes. Well, um, what attracted me to that role, I, I, I need to go back, you know, probably decades because I always wanted to do something different outside of newspapers. Well, you did it your whole life since you were eight. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I started young. Des- despite the fact that I loved, I loved every minute through all the challenges. I, I work with, I mean, I, 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 nobody, nobody has been so... Uh, I'm lucky as I have been to have worked in that industry with so many ridiculously talented people and good people, and, and many of whom are friends to this day. Uh, so I, I, I loved every, I loved every minute of it. And, and, and even when times got tough, there was just this, this, this spirit, this spirit inside a newspaper building that I don't, I don't think I could have found anywhere else, anywhere else. Uh, but again, having said that, I, you know, in the back of my mind, I always thought, you know, just, you know, I probably should try something else outside the newspaper business. Uh, and so, and it so happened to be that when Cox Enterprises, our owner for 50 plus years, decided to sell the, the, the Post and, and the Daily News, uh, that's when I said, all right, that's, that's probably a, a, a good, if timing was going to be work out, that probably was a good time. So that's when I, uh, I started listening a little more tentatively to uh, the, the owner of LRP Media Group, who, who, was twisting, who had been twisting my arm and we had become business colleagues through. For years, right? You guys yeah, worked yeah. in a lot of different we, we boards and through, things. Yeah, we were, yeah, we got to know each other through the business development board. And, and uh, uh, so I ultimately said, said yes and went to work for Ken Kahn and uh, who uh, is a brilliant uh, entrepreneur. Great guy. Uh, you know, just just uh, super smart. I What I say about Ken is I never walked away from a meeting with Ken, whether it was five minutes or 50 minutes without learning something. It, it was amazing. Every, every time, every time I go into his office and we, we talk about something, I would learn something. So uh, uh, really, really uh, uh, appreciative of the opportunity that he gave me to work for him. Uh, so, um, and, the, and the job itself was attractive because, A, he, he, uh, he asked me to be in charge of his, his uh, HR products and events division. Uh, it, 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 um, so it was a big job, which was attractive. Um, and there was a media products part to the job, and then there was an events part. So the media products... Uh, I obviously had the experience and the background, and he really wanted wanted me and us to to 
make that tr transition that we've talked about. We really wanted at, at at LRP. He wanted he really wanted me to help help make that transition from print to to digital with the media products. So so uh, I hired Elizabeth Clark, who was my editor at the time at, at at the at the Daily News, and and she and her staff did a fantastic job doing that. So we really put a lot of attention into that. That was very attractive. But the other part was events. Ken had stood up and. Uh, you know, uh, really basically had created the, the world's grown this HR technology event into the, the largest of its I was going to say it's largest, largest in the world, right? Largest event mm -hmm. for, the, uh, it was an annual event. There was another uh, event in the, in the spring, smaller around the, uh, around the benefits, but his HR technology uh, event was, uh, yeah, the world's largest. So that was very attractive because, I mean, I had, I, I had, I didn't have any experience doing that. So, but of course, he had built up a great, uh, a, a great event. Uh, so you know, I and he had really, he had really good, smart people uh, in in place. Uh, but I, I love that because again, you're, you know, I I, I really believe in that lifelong learning. So uh, it, it gave me an opportunity to to learn a space, the event space that uh, that uh, heretofore I. You know, I didn't have a lot. I had some, but I didn't have a lot of experience in that. Uh, and then the melt, you know, kind of, and then the melding and 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 uh, interlocking of the the content and the products into the into the event space mm -hmm. and how how you could kind of play play each of them off off each other was 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 something that was very very uh, you know in interesting and and ha you know trying to figure that out and uh, so. Uh, yeah, that, I mean that was that's how I ended up at LRP. The timing, timing was right. Uh, Ken, I knew Ken, and uh, I knew some of what the job would entail. Some of which I didn't. You know, look like all right. It's a good timing. A win-win. Win-win. Yeah. So throughout all of that, like you've always been very engaged in the community. You know, you spent a lot of years involved in the Palm Beach North Chamber and many, many, many other communi uh, or community organizations. So why is community involvement so important to you? Well, I think the best answer to that is, uh, you know, I, I mentioned I worked for Cox Enterprises for, for uh, most of my career, uh, actually, when you, when you add up the years. And, and, uh, and they, they, uh, they put a premium. The, the Cox, uh, you know, it grew from, you know, very small company, 120 plus years ago, into a 20 billion dollar international company. But they never lost sight of who they who they were, and and being part of the community and giving back to the community. Uh, so I looked at that as uh, I mean that that resonated with me. So both professionally, because obviously it's to be, to be a good steward of the business. I think you 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 really need to become part of part of the community and understand the community and. And build those business relationships and partnerships, you know, and then and then personally too. I mean, you end up you end up getting so much out of those relationships that you initially form from a from a business stand, standpoint. Uh, and you know, I I just part of me always uh, uh, I, I I just it's it's who I am. It's how I was raised. It's important that uh, you know you don't you don't forget where where you came from, you don't forget who, who might not uh, be as fortunate as you are. Um, and, you know, so I think that also is probably part of how I, how, how I was raised. Uh, you know, it's, it means something and hopefully I, I, I have passed that along and to, to my girls as well. So you've had a pretty successful career. You've done a lot in, in, in your career. What is the most satisfying aspect of it? That is a that is a great question, especially a, a few minutes ago when I said, I, you know, I loved every minute of it. I, I've I've loved every minute of it. Uh, I, I uh, probably the most satisfying is uh, I'm going to give a two part answer. Is a when you see when you see others who who worked with you and for you go on and do uh, amazing things and their careers take off and. And you know maybe you had just a small part in that. Um, that feels that's, good. That's super rewarding. I mean, yeah. because it's it's you know, as you know, in leadership, it's really not about you. 
that's that's a lesson you 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 learn fairly early on and 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 uh, it stands the test of time it's 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 not about you it's it, it isn't uh it's how can you help the people that are working with you and working for you um and then the other uh most satisfying part i i think we talked a little bit about this is kind of the 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 journey from from starting out in sports going to you know going to j school getting a a, a, a degree a degree in journalism but then uh, moving into the business side uh, and ending up running running uh, you know a couple healthy businesses I, I think that's probably most satisfying is is looking back is yeah that's that's interesting that really wasn't mapped out that wasn't necessarily on my uh, on, on my uh, you know what are you gonna be doing in 10 years or 20 years, uh, I was, I was literally more of a year by year, uh, at, at, at most of my career. Uh, so very fortunate to, to be able to have made that transition. Um, having said that I could have stayed in sports and been extremely happy and people do that and, and they are very successful. So, yeah. so it's, it's, uh, 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 you know, really the best of both worlds. And in in, for, for me, it was the best of both worlds. I love that answer. So I talked a little bit earlier and when you talked a little bit about leadership too. So you're the new chair of the Palm Beach North Chamber of Commerce, my favorite chamber of commerce, by the way. Um, it better be. It better be, right? What are your goals over the next year for the chamber? Yeah. Right, what are your goals for the chamber? Well, um, one thing I like to do is frame it as saying, um, you know this market, and, and I'll go back to the 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 days when you're when you're working and running the Palm Beach Post and the Palm Beach Daily News. This market, we're we're not we're not the our market isn't the size of uh, New York or Chicago or Houston, right? But we're we're a good sized market, uh, you know, medium sized market, if you will. Uh, but we always acted we always acted like we were with like we were in LA in terms of the size, it, it, like it, 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 as if we were in Houston or Chicago. Uh, that's, that's and our talent uh, reflected that. Um, and our work reflected that our resources reflected that uh, our success, uh, you know, because that's, that, that was our, our mindset. That was our vision is we're not satisfied to just, be like everybody else. We're not comparing ourselves to others who look like us, the same size of market, et cetera. And I think from a chamber standpoint, that applies as well. I, our chamber has, uh, Palm Beach North Chamber, incredible opportunity to, to, to take advantage of the momentum that, that, that we've built, that, that you and the staff and previous chairs and boards have, have built to continue to act a lot bigger than we kind of really are. I mean, we should, we should, what's going to stop us? Nothing, nothing. So, and, and I think you want to aspire to be bigger and better than some might think where you belong. So I, I think from a kind of a, where we want to go standpoint, let's, let's continue to think big. Think big and dream big. So speaking of th uh, think big and, and dream big, what are you most excited about over the next year? You know, being chair, what, what are you excited about? I am most excited. I, I think I'm most excited about, um, uh, I think there's, there's uh, relationships that we have in the community. Um, I'm really excited about uh, doing my, doing my small part to, to a, um, uh, forge new relationships and partnerships on behalf of the chamber, uh, and then be strengthened and broaden those partnerships that, that we are, that we already have. Um, I'm really excited and, and bullish on our opportunity to do even more for our small business members. And, uh, you know, we've, we talk about this, uh, uh, on the, on the side a lot. Every day. Every, yeah, every day. <laughs> this, so this is, this is not news to you on the pod. It might be news to the podcast uh, audience, but uh, I think we have a, a, a great opportunity, an exciting opportunity to deliver even more to our small business, to look at our 
and you talk about goals to to do a real real serious 360 look at at our programming around our uh, small businesses members and and just just being real honest with ourselves here what's what's working what's not working and what are what are the opportunities so that we can already take we can take what already is is in my view you know fantastic benefits for our small business m- members but there's 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 bigger and better we can do oh yeah and i think taking a hard look at, uh, at, at how we're doing with our with our small business members we have 750 plus members the majority of which as as you certainly know as we know are are are, are small businesses so yeah. 83% 83 there you go i uh, yeah that's a big number yeah that's a, that's the biggest i'm excited about uh, doubling down on on advocating for them and and uh, looking at what we're doing and how can we do it bigger and better. Yeah, we're in for a great year. You're right. We do have a lot of good momentum and we're, we're going to have an awesome year. I'm really looking forward to it. So we got to start to wrap things up. So I got a couple questions for you that I, I ask almost every guest, right? So what kind of advice would you give Timmy? Yeah. Little Tim, little oh, Tim, little years Tim. and years ago. What kind yeah. of advice would you give him? I would say uh, you can do it. I would say you can do it. I don't think I was unlike many young uh, at the time. You know, you're just starting out in your career, uh, and you, there's always some self doubt there. Mm-hmm. I, I, the most successful people that I that I know, uh, you know, there's there's you know, on the outside looking in, you don't think that's there, but it is. It's inside most of us. Uh, and I would tell young Timmy is you can, you can do it. You, you can do it. I love that. I love that. You know? All right, last question. All right, it's a deep one. Uh-oh, <laughs> we're going deep? What do you want your legacy to be? Wow. I told you it was deep. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well... I think you're. I think you're going. You're. You're looking for a work answer, a work related, career related. No, no, no. I want a probably. Tim. I want a Tim answer. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to work one. I want well, a real Tim I mean, answer. You know, I. I. Uh, there's nothing better than being a dad, you know, and and you know being hundred percent. Being a good. Agree with being you. a good husband and 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 being a dad. Uh, there's and, and you know my family has sacrificed uh, because you know, these jobs that we're in, they, you know, they do take a lot of our time and, and, and our attention. So, um, you know, that, that, that's, that's the out of the office, that's the out of the office answer is, is yeah. Hey, you know, he, uh, he was a pretty good dad. I lost my dad when I was 22. So I, I didn't, i never had a mentor really. Um, you know, and dads often fill that role. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's super important to me to, to do to my very best to be, to be, uh, you know, a good, a good dad. Uh, cause I, you know, most of my life I, I didn't, I didn't have my dad and, uh, that's a big, that's a big hole. That's a big, that's a big hole. So I, I, I get it. So I do my best. Well, I'll tell you what, I've, I've gotten to know you pretty well, um, both professionally and personally over the last, you know, five years. And I can tell you, you are a great dad. So you're doing a good job with that. So keep it up and you should be really proud of that. Well, you're a great CEO, and, uh, and uh, we're lucky to have you in in that chair. And and we're, um, you know, there are big things ahead of us. I know that, and and for you as well. So it's, well, a, it's a it's a it's a privilege to work with you. I I feel the same way about you. Looking forward to an amazing year. Um, I can't thank you enough for being here today, being so authentic and real, and 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 really uh, sharing your story today on the Palm Beach North podcast. So thank you so much for being here, Tim. To everyone tuning in, uh, thank you again for tuning in to see the show. Don't forget to share, like, tell all your friends about all the amazing things that are going on in the Palm Beach North region. We look forward to seeing you guys in a couple weeks. See you soon.